Hello friends, SentinelH here, and welcome back to our Chromaticraft tutorial series. Uh, in this episode, we're going to take a look at a very uh, useful item for building multiples of things. This is the uh, construction mirror. So if we go into our Chromic Lexicon and we scroll over to the right, we will find it here under multi-block casting, the construction mirror. So what this does is it allows you to build uh, multiples of something. Whatever you place, in so whatever block you place in a specific area, uh, and we'll take a look at it when we actually use it, gets duplicated in as a, a bunch of other uh, areas. So you can get you can do some really cool things with this. Um, and so we're going to take a look at, at some of the things that you can do uh, to do with it. It's pretty. Um, easy to use. Your manipulator changes the size of the region and empty hand changes the cell count or region shape and we'll take a look at all that so you can see what that means. Um, okay so uh, to craft this requires not that much, it's not really that expensive, um, not that many, it's only got like one Chromaticraft specific uh, component, the elemental core, uh, which we've seen how to craft before. It's a binding crystal and uh, one of each elemental stone. You just need to place that in the middle of your casting uh, casting table, and then we need to arrange some items around it. Uh, a block of quartz goes just above the table to the north. A uh, an emerald goes just to the south. Uh, we need two diamonds. One goes on the bottom, and one goes at the top. The left and right sides are obsidian. Five on a side. And then we have gold, six of them, so three on the left, three on the right, then four blocks of redstone. So it's really not that expensive at all. Uh, and then we can go ahead and we can cast this. No lumens, it's an earlier game uh, recipe that doesn't require any lumens. So we can just cast that, and now we have ourselves a construction mirror. So. We'll take a look at uh, how we can use this. We're going to need a fairly sizable, uh, you know, sort of like empty area. And uh, I think what we'll do is we'll come out here into the water, over the water, and I'll grab some stone. And we will uh, we'll build ourselves a little platform out here. And uh, that'll let us see uh, pretty easily. Um, it'll let you see because there's not going to be anything in the way uh, what this thing actually does. Um, actually, this isn't going to work because I need to be able to place the blocks. So forget that. We're just going to go back to the uh, our building site where we have our uh, meteor towers because we've got some empty space around here that we can use. I had one set up over there for testing. Uh, we're going to go ahead down here and place down a construction mirror. So when you first place the mirror, uh, it's going to look the area around it's going to look like this. So these blue squares are the area that is going to um, duplicate whatever you place inside the red area. Right now the red area is just a single block. If I go ahead and place, well I can't actually place it directly on top, um, if, unless I hold shift. If we go ahead and place the block directly on top of the mirror, it'll just blanket all the squares around it. This isn't really that useful and it's not what it's really meant for anyway. If we right click on the top of the um, mirror, we can cycle through a variety of different shapes. Like square and sort of like diamond shapes, which we can then increase and decrease in size by right clicking or uh, shift right clicking on the various sides of it. So if we shift right click, we reduce it in size. If we right click, we increase it in size and you can keep doing that until it gets pretty darn small. Uh, but this isn't gonna be all that useful. We're gonna go back to we got rec the square shape because, oh, that's not the square shape. There we go. Because the first thing we need to do is increase the size of the actual uh, building zone, the red circle. Use your elemental manipulator and right click and this will increase the size of that area. Um, every time you right click, it increases the size of the zone in that direction by two, one on one side, one on the other. So this is always an odd number. The, bl the blocks, the area is always an odd number. 
and uh, this is always the center block. Now as you can see, well, as we increase the size of the red square, all of the blue squares get bigger as well. And we can go ahead and with our empty hand, now we can, for say, reduce the, uh, the number. So if you reduce the number, you can get a minimum, and see the, the blue squares are gone now, of two. So the minimum we can have of these squares appears to be two. If I right click on the top of this, uh, we can cycle between shapes, but since we only have two, we can't really see the shapes very well. We'll go ahead and increase that. Now we have a, a eight of them, and here we have only four. So this one gets rid of the corners. It's like a diamond shape. And then there's another shape that's like a little bit different. We can build it up and we have like one extra one over there. And so there's a lot of options as far as the shapes go. Let's get back to our like basic square. And we'll just sort of shrink this down. So we can have this, uh, oh, we shrunk that down a little too much. Oop. Oh yeah, so this shape is not a square, it's a little different shape. Once you make this this thing huge, it can be a little tricky to keep track of what shapes you've got going on. That's probably just me though. Because I'm a dummy. Okay, now if I place a block inside here, it's going to duplicate that block in exactly the same spot um, in all the others. So you can look in any direction, but you always, we always look north in Chromaticraft, so we can keep looking north. We'll see what happens as we place these. Um, it's going to place and it's going to break blocks uh, in exactly the same square in all of them, which is pretty cool. As long as you break the ones in the red box, it'll duplicate. If I break one in the blue box, it's not going to duplicate that action. We can build up a couple of squares. Let's see how high we can go. Well, Rekha said only a few squares, but it looks like we can go pretty darn high. There we go. So the highest we can go with this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, uh, counting the square that the block that the construction mirror is on. So we can go eight blocks above the mirror. Oops. Come on. So if we wanted to build, say, a bunch of meteor towers, we would need to have a couple of these mirrors or just have the one, build the bottom eight, uh, nine layers, and then move the mirror up and then do the same thing, right? So we can do something like that. So for example, um, let's say you wanted to build some multi-blocks from, uh, from Chromaticraft, like, oh, I don't know. What would be one that you might want a bunch of, a bunch of, uh, of? How about, um, do, 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 how about focus frames? You might want a bunch of focus frames. So we could go ahead and actually build, uh, build some focus frames using our, uh, our mirror. So let me grab the aura blocks, this and what appears to be groove, oh yeah, groove two and groove. So I, I have some of these. So we have an aura stabilizer. I've got the stone groove two. Let's go ahead and grab ourselves. Where is it? Oh, there it is. I don't know how I didn't see it. That, and we'll grab ourselves the groove. And I'll save that for later. And then, yeah. So what we could do is we could start building this if I hold shift and space and right click it'll it'll do that and then we can just build this multi-block as long as it fits inside the uh the area that we've we've uh, delegated here which i actually didn't check uh so let me go and, and make sure that we're going to have enough room so it is five so we are going to have enough space and it's going to build these all right next to each other but that'll be fine okay so we need the um bricks and we need grooves so, for instance, we'll grab some bricks. Bricks go on the corners. So, brick, brick. We can actually do that. Bricks. And then these grooves. 
Now, this <laughs> this might actually um, not work properly because it's gonna it's putting them right next to each other. So I'm I'm not sure this is gonna work because <laughs> you see the problem we've got. I don't I don't know that this is gonna actually work. We would need to make the area larger. So let's go ahead and uh, and break this stuff because what's going to happen is all these multi-blocks are going to be touching each other and so I don't think any of them are actually going to work. So we'll break that, we'll break that, and we'll go ahead and make the area bigger. Boop. Boop. So now they'll all be separated by one block. So that'll... Oh darn it, I, sh I changed the shape. That shape, we only have one now. Okay. So we'll do this again. Start placing this. Nope. And so what we can see here is, oops, this really does uh, speed up building lots of things uh, if you need to build a bunch of something that exactly the same. Now there are some restrictions. Um, it's not going to, when I'm placing these blocks, it's not going to break blocks that are already existing as you can see. So it didn't build the blocks over there because uh, there were blocks already there, right? So you do got to make sure that your building area is clear. Oops. Otherwise, you're going to end up with partially built uh, stuff. Um, now, if we if we go ahead and break blocks, it's actually a different uh, a different story. It actually works differently. So let's go ahead and finish what we're doing here, and then I'll show you that. So we'll go ahead and grab, we don't need any more of that, so we'll grab some stone column, I already forgot, place that, do 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 do, and we can very quickly build ourselves a forest of focus frames, oops, we'll skip the runes because you're going to have to place different runes on each one anyway. Boop. No. Boop. 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 And then that's um, engraved. We'll grab some engraved. Boop. 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 One. Two. And that's where the energy focus goes. So we could very easily go one, two, do, 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 and. <laughs> If I do go ahead and grab some uh, grab some runes here, now you obviously need to have these blocks in your inventory when you do this, I would imagine. But I'm in creative mode, so it works just fine. Now, if we go ahead and grab a where is it? Energy focus. Let's see if this works or if uh, the game crashes or something. Okay, so that doesn't work. So you can't place things like uh, like that using this, unless it's just because this doesn't stack. So let me grab some more of them. Nope. So um, things like this energy focus will not duplicate. Uh, so that's an important uh, thing to consider. Certain things aren't going to duplicate, but basic structural blocks will. So apparently blocks that have um, functions like this, they're, they, they might not necessarily duplicate. Um, but, you know, standard blocks will. So as we can see, uh, we only had to build one of these, and now we have nine of them. So um, quite useful. Now, and you could just keep scaling that if you wanted more and more and more. And... Um, the area of the area the area can get really big, so if we go ahead down here with our uh, our empty hand, and we sort of oh yeah it even extends below the uh, the thing, and that's another interesting thing. But um, actually no, yeah only one block below gets duplicated. Um, so yeah, bro the breaking of blocks is also duplicated. Let's just keep extending it out, so we can see that the, the area goes really far. And um, I don't actually know what the maximum uh, range is on it, but... Okay, it looks like that's about... Wait, unless that's just underground. Let's see. 
Nope, looks like we did reach uh, whatever the maximum range is. There we go. Because I thought I clicked it a ton of times. Let's go ahead and place one up high so we can see better. We'll stick it right there. And then we'll just keep clicking. So the range is pretty huge in each direction, it would seem. Which is very useful. Look at that. Look how long this is. Pretty cool. So I'm not, we're not uh, just, it's going to be useful for other things as well. Um, not just like building multi-block structures. So let's say for instance, I'm building like a wall. Uh, like if I'm building a castle or something, just whatever it is that I'm building, it's going to be really long. Oops, I broke it. Dang it. This is the danger of being in creative mode while doing this. One, two. Let's say I wanted to build a castle wall and I wanted it to be five blocks thick and then I wanted it to be, you know, however long that is. So I could use this and do that. So if I just go over here and grab some stone and I start building it, Oops. It's going to duplicate the exact location, but as long as I fill this entire section, then it's going to connect. So for instance, if I'm building something that has a repeating pattern, like say that, and what, say we want some stone bricks on here, so that we got it like stone bricks and we're building like we build up with our stone bricks like this and then we grab a stairs stone brick stairs we want to put them upside down like that and then put some more did i get no i have it right here stone brick across the top like that and end up with and that's outside the building range so it's not going to work but you get my point so you can see I just built an entire big like wall uh, and it didn't take me very long at all. And I didn't have to use like any sort of creative shenanigans. I mean, I mean creative mode, but I didn't have to use any special tools. There we go. We now have a wall. So this thing is really useful. Just remember that it's going to mirror the exact location that you uh, place the blocks in. So do a little experimenting to see um, how it works so you can get a feel for it. It's really quite simple and, uh, and a straightforward block. Um, obviously I'm not quite sure on all the shapes and what they do. Um, let's just go ahead and if we widen this out a bit and get rid of this stuff. It also makes destroying, deleting things that you've placed really easy uh, because you can break them and only in one area and they all get broken. So I very quickly destroyed that wall as well. So we got this big old area, and so if I start right clicking, we should be able to see, yep, this one is a um, sort of a diamond pattern. This one appears to be sort of a oblong shape, if you look at that, like a football sort of. This one appears similar to that, but it's more of a square. It kind of extends off uh, in one direction. It's kind of like an oblong shape. This one is missing the corners, it would appear. And this one is like a standard square. We're back around. So yeah, now you can use this for other things. Um, you can use it for breaking blocks. It's not really the intended use case, but it does work. So if I widen this out, I don't want it that wide though. <laughs> Let's do a three by three. And then extend it. Now if I go ahead and break some stone, it is, well, if the stone's in the area, um, break some dirt. 
it's gonna break that dirt everywhere else. You could try to use this to like clear out a, a large area inside of a, a of a cave, but it's really not meant for that, and it's gonna be a little annoying to do. Not that you couldn't do it. So if I grab a, I want to grab a a, a a nil pendant so that I'll be able to see. If I come inside this mountain, oh hey look, luminite, and I place this down, and then I uh, increase the area a bit. As long as there are blocks here to break, it's gonna break the blocks around it that are uh, on those tiles. So I've already sort of broken a lot of the blocks that were here, so it's not really... But as I break these, place these and break these, it's only going to break the same exact block, so it won't break this basalt block because the basalt block was already there. But if I go ahead and break these blocks, you can see that it is breaking an area. So you could use this um, for that. If I go into uh, survival mode with my pickaxe and do that, be able to see kind of what happens. It drops the blocks where they're at, right? So it's not going to like auto collect anything for you. Um, Reka doesn't think that this, and, and basically, this isn't going to destroy the durability of her tools either. Uh, Reka doesn't think that it will take out tool durability for every block broken. Um, simply the block that you break. Because this isn't the intended use for it. You could you can certainly do it, but this isn't what it's meant for. It's meant for, uh, you know, mirroring um, multi-blocks and, uh, and building uh, symmetrical structures and stuff like that. Um, you can also use this to build a casting uh, room. Casting temple. I think. No, it's not going to work. Um, now, I was just thinking that because it's a regular structure, I might be able to use the um, the mirror to build a casting temple easier by placing the pillars, but that's not going to work because for anything to be built on the uh, blue areas, uh, it has to be um, part of the uh, in the red area. So you're not going to be able to, let's say, oop. Uh, go out to here and try and build all the pillars at the same time. I don't think that's going to work. Nah, that wouldn't work at all. Um, so, uh, it's really for building whole structures. I didn't just break a hole in this, did I? No. Um, but yeah. So it's got a few limitations, but it's it's, it's quite a powerful tool uh, for building things in a hurry. So I uh, hope you guys have enjoyed our look at the um, construction mirror. <laughs> and uh, thank you guys so much for watching. So like and comment the video if you did enjoy it. And uh, especially if you want to suggest something for the next episode, definitely leave it in the comments. Join our Discord if you're interested in chatting with us. Uh, I'm Sentinel H, and I'm signing out.